and I was gone for five weeks. And um, I think some of you might have known, but maybe some of you didn't, that I was in Israel. And um, I went, um, there we go. I went as part of a group. Um, my family didn't come with me. It was so sad. It was so hard to be away from them for so long. About halfway through, I think I had like a panic attack because I was like, oh, I need to be home. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was good. We got through it. And um, so it was part of a group of people that came, other, mostly other worshipers and other worship leaders that came from all over the country. And a lot mostly from Kansas City. I don't know if you know or have heard anything about um, International House of Prayer in Kansas City. It's a 24 hours a day, seven days a week worship and prayer um, place that has been going on since 1989. And it's been continuous 24 7 any time of day or night there's an, actually an app that you can go and and listen in and see what's going on in the prayer room any time of day or night and I've been listening to that for years you know I've never gotten an opportunity to go but um, ever since my kids were really little and I would just have it going on in the background because it's just such a rich resource right for prayer and worship together any time of day and night and um, so that's how I found out about this trip going to Israel. And I, as soon as I heard about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go. But it was right before, it was scheduled last year, right before um, October 7th, which was the, when the war broke out in Israel. And so it got canceled. And so, but I was like, all right, Lord, I'm just trusting you. Cause I know he was, you know, he was all talking about this trip and letting me know that it was coming. And I knew it was him that I was supposed to go. And um, so it got rescheduled and I got an email probably maybe a month and a half before the actual trip was, was gonna be rescheduled for, and it had changed. Um, before it was going to be just a week or a week and a half, and it changed to a whole month long. And it, and it was like worship um, and also learning about the Bible and also service like serving the people of Israel. And so I was like, yes, that's even better, right? It's like, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just all in. I'm going no matter what. And so, um, so yeah, Tony graciously agreed to <laughs> let me go and listen to the voice of the Lord and know <laughs> that it was him. And so I got to go on this trip. And so this was our group. Wow. And it was 18 of us. And like I said, they were from all over the country. A lot of them were from Kansas City, but there were some from Alabama and some from California. And um, if you recognize Jeremy up, I mean, Jacob up there, He's got his hat on backwards, and he's in the back with a, with a green shirt. He has come and led worship here before, and he was the only other person I knew that was going on the trip, and um, so it was fun. It was a really, really good group, and this is us in Jerusalem, which we, we didn't spend a whole lot of time in Jerusalem. We only went um, for a weekend. Um, we were mostly in Tel Aviv. And so we got to stay in a guest house called Bet Emanuel, which is in this historic, historically Christian neighborhood. And it's been, the guest house was owned by an, a Christian missions organization for like 200 years. It's been, it's been a place and it's been a place where people gather in, in that area to worship the Lord and to seek his face and to, you know, it's kind of a home base for a lot of different um, organizations and stuff. So, so we got to go there and what we did mostly as we stayed there, there is a um, prayer room in the guest house. And that's, it's that lower picture right there is... Um, in the middle is part of the prayer room. And we just spent an hour every day, every single day worshiping the Lord. And it was really cool because there was a lot of us from that were worship leaders, right? So we just kind of took turns leading worship every day and we got to spend an hour. And then 
after that, we would dig into scriptures. And Samuel Whitefield, who's the, the guy who organized the trip, he, he came out of IHOP KC. And um, he would teach us Bible and teach us about Israel and how, you know, how it relates. How do we relate to God? How is God revealing himself to his people through the Bible, through Israel, the people of, of Jacob, you know, and Israel and in the past and in the present and in the future. And it was amazing. And then we also got to just do a whole bunch of worship in different places. We went, that, um, that picture up on the top there, on the top left, is uh, one of the largest Messianic Jewish congregations in the country, and it's in, it's in Ashdod. And we got to go and worship there and with them, with that group of, of um, believers. Uh, there was a church that was right next to the guest house, um, that, the one right under that, the middle left, is the, the Catholic, it's not Catholic, it's an Anglican church service that we got to be a part of every Sunday and we got to lead worship there. Um, our, there's an Israeli worship leader up at the top in the middle there. Um, her name is Shay, Shay Soul, and we got to connect with her a lot. And she is a Messianic Jew, and she worships in Hebrew and in English. And she did a concert, and we got to go and join her and do a song. We sang The Blessing, which was so powerful, you guys. Holy Spirit just broke in because we're in Israel in this group of people that are Israeli, right? And we got to just sing the blessing over them, like the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face. You know, he's for you, especially in this time where people weren't going to Israel because of the war and there's all this conflict and all this stuff, right? But we got to be there and sing the blessing and it was just amazing, amazing. This one was some, a group of kids. We went down to a school, just a small group of us went to a school um, of a really religious school, so we could not sing or say Jesus at all, like it was, you know, but just trusting that we come and bring the Holy Spirit, and we got to just worship with them, and, you know, sing songs with them, and they brought in, we brought instruments, and, you know, they were able to play. So, all this to say, I got to see you guys worship in a new way in a different way than I have ever seen worship before. And I'll share some of that testimony at the end, but the main ministry that me and three other ladies got to work with, we kind of, because we were such a big group, we kind of broke up into smaller groups. And so not everybody did everything for the whole month, but the main thing that I did was working with, um, with women who were either homeless or were being trafficked. And it's this ministry called Red Carpet. And we got to go there where they come. Like it's a safe place. It's in the neighborhood where they live. And, and just we just got to sit in the room and just worship. The woman who started this ministry, Anat, she always saw that it to be a place where worship was. So these women can come. They can just come. It's right there in the neighborhood where they all are and um, kind of the red district of the, of the city. Um, and they would just come in and they could get a meal. They could shower if they wanted to, get a change of clothes. Um, they could get their hair washed and cleaned and cut. They could do, there's a station set up where they could um, get a manicure or a pedicure, just pampered. They could get a massage if they wanted to. It was an amazing, amazing ministry just to love, right? To be the hands and feet and to be Jesus to these women. And we got to just sit there. That was this corner right here. Just sit here, sit there and just worship and just worship God. And it was amazing. I'm going to share a testimony, a specific testimony about that um, at the end. But um, one of the things that I really, really, really saw so clearly about worship on this trip is just how we are, you guys, we're so designed to worship. I love this Psalm 84. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Okay, we're going to look at that verse again, but let's talk about music. <laughs> 
So this is one of the things that we, we did during our Bible study was to look at music in the Bible, to look at worship in the Bible in a deeper way, and to let's just kind of to take this apart. You know, let's think about it. It's, it's so amazing. And I hope that I can portray what you guys, um, to you guys, a little bit even of what I have gotten a brain shift about <laughs> since this trip. So music is something that we all know, right? It's fundamental to human beings. And it does things to us. It, means, it moves us, right? It can change us and, and grow us and all this stuff. So I have an example. There's a video I want you guys to watch. And just as you're watching it, just listen. And we're going to see we're gonna see how we feel and see what, what comes out of these. But go ahead. We'll play that. Okay, did you guys realize what happened? Isn't that cool? It was the exact same scene, exact same thing, right? But then when you play different music with each one, what happens? It's like it becomes a whole different thing, right? A whole, I love that because it's like the first one was like, oh, you know, you're making up the story in your head. Like, why is he running? What is he running from? Maybe somebody's chasing him. Maybe, you know, whatever. And then the second one is, oh, maybe there's something, you know, maybe he's like, I don't know, he's working out. He's just like, you know, like there's all these different stories that you come up with just based on the different music, right? And what's happening in this scene. And and music has the power to do that. Music is a vehicle, right? It carries with it emotion. Didn't we feel something? We felt something different every time those different pieces of music played. It carries a story, right? We were like in our imagination thinking of like, why is he running? What's he doing? What's going on? It can carry us from one place to another. How many times have we put on our favorite song Maybe we were sad, right? Or we were feeling a certain way and we put on some worship music or we put on, you know, something that we like and we just, all of a sudden at the end of that song, we just feel different, right? It took us from one place to another. And music invites us to imagine, doesn't it? Right? We were imagining different things with each of those scenarios, it engages our imagination, which I love. And as I was preparing for today and thinking about and coming out of the teachings that I heard in Israel, imagination, isn't it really the place where our heart and our mind meet? Doesn't that make sense, right? It's like what goes in our heart, our emotions, right? And then our mind is thinking up all of these different scenarios of what this what what might be going on or it just invites us and music just does that and it meets us in that place where our heart and mind meet and doesn't that sound like something that sounds like a verse doesn't it love the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and strength right so music i looked up um I just kind of did a dictionary search, right, of what music means, and this is the definition I got. It is vocal or instrumental sounds, or both, 
right? Combined in such a way as to produce beauty, a form, harmony, and expression of emotion. And that's exactly what happened when we watched that, right? And it's interesting because what else is a vocal sound combined in a way to communicate? What else does that? Language, right? Words, that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> we're combining sounds in a form, right, to communicate. So music, even, you know, I've seen, these are, there's people that can like just take a piece of sheet music, not me, I, I can't do that, <laughs> but they can read the music notes and not even hear it. And they just, they can read it like they're reading a book and they, they know what it sounds like and they, they can, they're that good, right? It is a language, like it, it's something. And if you think about sound, like sound that produces a communication that produces emotion, right? What is sound though? Sound is just vibration. It's, it's frequency, right? So let's watch this other cool video that I found. This is gonna blow your guys' mind if you haven't seen it. I hope you haven't seen it, because it's so cool. So here we go. Isn't that amazing? Have you guys seen that before? Raise your hand if you've seen that before. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> and if you has, haven't seen that, it's amazing. And it's just the sound, it's just the vibration. And when I was watching it again this time, I've seen it before, because we always th like, think this is so cool. Um, I've noticed this time that the more complex that it got, right, when they turned up, the, the frequency into more higher frequencies, the more complex the patterns formed, right? It's so cool. And then it kind of shifts your thinking because think about these verses now, having watched that video and how sound can create a pattern, right? Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Didn't he speak it? with a sound, it's so cool. I wonder what kind of frequency he sang to make a tree, <laughs> right? It's so cool. Psalm 66, four, everything on earth will worship you. 
They will sing your praises, shouting your name in glorious songs. Right? Have you heard that everything in all of creation has a frequency? Right? Everything vibrates. Right? Psalm 96, 11. You guys, Psalm 96 is amazing. If you, like, just go home and read Psalm 96, the whole thing. It's so good. 96, 11. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Doesn't that have a fuller meaning now where your brain is just like, oh my gosh, and my brain's exploding? After seeing that, just that little video with the frequency thing and like, oh my gosh, it's all over scripture, right? What if God made everything to resonate with a frequency because he can hear the sound? We don't hear it, right? This chair is resonating with a frequency. I can't hear that. We can't hear that. But God hears it. What if God hears it? What if God made all of creation to sing back to him? It's for his pleasure, right? It's not for us. Like, we can't hear that. Isn't there verses about how the stars sing? Right? And then science has proven that they actually do put out a frequency, the stars, the heavens, right? Declare the glory of God. <laughs> it's so cool. So what if music is his language? Because it's the language, it's a thing that he made everything to do, to produce a sound. Right? What if it's his divine language? And then he created us in his image. I just did a quick Google search, because I was like, I wonder if every people group on earth sings. Is that, is that true? Like, it feels like it's true, but is it true? And this is what Google gave me back. Singing, the vocal production of musical tones is so basic to man, its origins are lost in antiquity and predate the development of spoken language. The voice is presumed to be the original musical instrument. God put an instrument in our bodies <laughs> that all of us have, right, to communicate a sound. And there is no human culture, no matter how remote or isolated, that does not sing. Isn't that awesome? And then, in the scriptures, we've seen this, we've talked about this before, right? Over and over and over, the Lord says and asks us and commands us to sing. Remember this one? We've studied it. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. We are designed to worship. You guys, all of creation is designed with a sound, right? And then we had this verse in the beginning, Psalm 84.3. Let's read it, and then doesn't it feel different now, right? Let's read it different. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord, because he put it in us. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. What of the very, very matter of our hearts and our flesh? <laughs> we have a resonant frequency too, right? That God can hear. You sing for joy to the living God. And then he gives us free will, and he asks us, will we give, a, give him back our song? Right? We're invited. What if he's inviting us into something bigger than what we thought, than what we imagined? Right? We're invited into that language to behold and to know him. Right? Remember the vehicle? 
Music, worship is a vehicle. It takes us places. When we worship the Lord, isn't it like that? It's like a vehicle. We can come in feeling one way and then we worship the Lord and all of a sudden we're feeling something different, right? Our heart and our mind is engaged and focused on the creator God who made all things to sing. And we sing a song to the Lord and we give it back to him. And all of a sudden we're like those plates. <laughs> Right? That we're just resonating with a new sound. We've tuned into his frequency, right? And we just feel like everything just lines back up. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like that? It just feels like, oh, wow, everything's right with the world now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know? Right. And you guys, we're created to reflect. We were created in his image to reflect his beauty, and his majesty, right? We tune in to his frequency. We remember scriptures. We read his word. We talk with each other about the Lord, right? We listen to music. We sing worship. All of these things that he's put into place to tune us back into him. And worship is such an amazing way to do that. There's other ways to do it, but it tunes us, right? And then from that place, I love this, because it's like music and worship is like prayer. Like, what is prayer? Talking to God, right? But what if our worship is also like prayer? So we're talking to God. We're communicating him in an emotion, right? We're commuting, communicating to him. We're expressing something to him that's hard to do in other ways, right? It just tunes, it just sets our heart and our mind and engages us. I love, love, love this verse. We talked about this verse a lot in Israel. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Think about we all with unveiled face that's talking about Moses. Remember when he went on the mountain to worship the Lord and he was transformed so much that his face glowed, right? With unveiled face, behold the glory of the Lord. It's what we've been doing for the past 15 minutes, beholding the glory of the Lord, right? Understanding, oh my goodness, something shifting in my brain, like the very sound that you asked us to make. Behold the glory of the Lord, right? We all, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image that we behold, right? Yeah. The image of God that we're beholding from one degree of glory to another, right? I'm beholding God in a new way now than I did a year ago or two years ago or five years ago, right? Because I'm being transformed every time we worship. We're tuning, he's remaking us, he's molding us. Every time we behold his glory, every time we have our heart and mind engaged and we're reading his word and we're just coming alive, right? We've been designed to produce a sound from one degree of glory to another. So awesome. Yeah, and we get to do it. We're invited in. It's not something that he compels us to do. He asks us. I mean, he commands us. He does because it's for our good, right? Not because he wants, like, somehow he's egotistical and he wants... <laughs> Right? He's just like, yeah, sing about how great I am. Because <laughs> maybe something else is happening that we didn't realize when we sing, when we let that vibration come forth out of, our, out of the instrument that he gave us to sing back to him, to give it back to him, to give him a sound. And we get to... So let's, let's get to, <laughs> let's do it again, right? And as we worship him, yeah, let me just pray. I'm just going to pray what I was just going to say. Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, you're so awesome. You are so mighty, more than we can even imagine.
are you than a storm, God? Your voice is powerful. Your voice is majestic. It's awesome. specific things that that I saw in the power of worship. So I was telling you guys about that red carpet ministry that I got to do and me and it was three other women and um, we went twice a week and we got there at about 10 in the morning and we stayed until three. And we we're just worshiping in the background, right, while women are coming in, and um, they're used to this. They've been, you know, this is their safe place. We're, we were coming into a ministry that already existed and had been running and going for years. And so at first, when, um, when they came in and they saw us sitting on those little chairs of worshiping, you know, and they're just like, what is happening? <laughs> right? They're very, very not used to this. And these are, you know, it's hard. These are hard women. You guys, it's not like what you see on TV, right? They're, it was so hard to see these women that are on the street that are being trafficked and but so grateful for this safe place. But you could see it in their bodies. You can see the effects of the drugs and the and just everything else that I can't imagine, right? You you just you see it. And there's young women like twenty something, twenty four, and they look like they're in their fifties. It just t takes a toll on their bodies and on their hearts and on their spirits and on their minds. So the first few times that we went, and actually it was the very first time that we went, um, and we would just sit there in the corner, right? And we were worshiping, and um, for how many hours? There were three of us on that team that were worship leaders, so we would just kind of switch. <laughs> we'd, we'd play for a couple hours, and then we'd be like, okay, my fingers are dying, your turn, right? And um, so we would just worship, and, we, and the women would come in, and they were just like, what is happening? Why are, who are these people? Why are they singing? And sometimes they didn't speak English, right? They, most of them only spoke Hebrew, so they couldn't even really even understand what we were saying. But that's the power of music in general, right? You don't need to understand language like we just understood, right? It is a language. And it carries with it an emotion and a spirit, right? And we know that it's the Spirit of God. So, so we're worshiping, and these women are coming in, and they're like, what's going on? And um, they're doing their thing like normal, right? These are women that are obviously, you know, impaired on, on whatever it is. And so they're coming in, and they're, they're getting their clothes, and they're doing their thing. And, um, and then there was this one woman that came in, and I, I can't remember her name, but every single time she came in, she was carrying something with her because it was just a uh, eruption every single time she came in. Eventually, a knot banned her from coming in. She, she put her on, on ban for three weeks because every time she'd come in, she'd start yelling at people. The whole place would erupt in chaos, right? And so, um, so she comes in, and when she came in, we had stopped worshiping for just a minute because we were switching, and then we got kind of com in conversation with one of the other volunteers. And um, so there was no worship going on. When she came in the room and she starts erupt, like everybody's you know, yelling, and it's all this chaos, right? And so me and that's um, Andrea, my friend. She, she's from Kansas City. We made really good friends because we were on this ministry together, and we were living for a month and working together and doing all that stuff together. And so she and I look at each other, and I like slowly reach for the guitar, and I start playing again, right? Because I realize, oh my gosh, we stopped worshiping for five minutes, and look at this, look at what happened. Like the room is in chaos, right? So we start worshiping, 
And then all of a sudden, everything just calms down again. Like everybody, they, like the, they just stop yelling, every, everything calms down. And it was, so, it was so powerful to us. Andrea and I looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, did you just see that? <laughs> did you just feel that, right? It was like the whole atmosphere in the place shifted. And it was so cool because it wasn't only us that felt that. Everyone else in the room, it was like they could see what just happened. Like they realized when we stopped playing, chaos, we started playing and everything settles back down, right? And so after that, and it's the same women that come in every week, right? So after that, people, it was like they, God did this because it's like they intuitively understood this is why we're here. This is why we're in the room worshiping, where before they were like, what are you doing? What's going on, <laughs> right? But they saw it firsthand, so it was so cool. So then people started coming to sit with us, and they would sit near us, and they would just sit there. And that you'd see them, and they'd sit, and they'd close their eyes. Or There's also a massage chair. That's what that woman in orange right there in the picture, she's massaging one of the clients. And... Um, so they would come and sit, and they would just want to be close to, to the worship. You know, it was amazing, just the transformation. So there was that testimony that I saw just firsthand. I want to also tell you about one of the other ladies, one of the other women. Her name was Isabel. Sweet Isabel. She was probably only 22 years old, but she looked 40. And every single time she, she came in, the first few times we were there, you could tell she was high or something, and she just, they had this walk. There's multiple ones of the women that had this walk, so I think it was a certain drug that they were on or something. It was almost like they were on a ship. Like they were just constantly like walking like that, you know, just with, with things moving, it seemed like. And so... Um, Isabel would come in and she would go straight to the clothes to get it and she'd rip things off the racks and she's throwing things off and the volunteers just come and they're so sweet and loving and caring, right? They just come and they pick up after her and they put it back on the rack and she's complaining and she's grumbling and she's speaking in Hebrew and I can't understand what she's saying, but you know, and then she starts, she switches to English and she's like, this doesn't fit and that doesn't fit. Why do they never have my clothes that fit me? You know, and she's just having a time by herself, right? And so then she'll, she'll go and sometimes she'll get something to eat and she'll just kind of wander around and she'll just kind of stand there and watch wander and wander and then she'll leave. So that happened the first three, four, maybe five times that we went. We were going twice a week. And then somewhere in the middle, she just came in and she sat. There was also right in front of us, there were um, two cots laid out in case people wanted to just come and rest and just sleep. They could just sleep or rest or lay down, be safe. There were no men allowed in the building. That was one of the jobs that we would switch off doing when, um, if we weren't worshiping, we would guard the door because no men were allowed in the, in the space. And so, um, and we'd also watch for later on the one who got banned. <laughs> she wasn't allowed to come in anymore for, she was for three weeks on band. So, so she came in and she sat down on one of the cots near us and she was just listening to the worship. And then she laid down and she fell asleep. And so as she was sleeping, we just continued worshiping and we were praying on purpose over her. Like we were praying over her, we were singing over her, we played the blessing on purpose to sing over her, right? We're just trying to think of songs to do to like, to, as she was resting, as she was sleeping, just to, to sing the word of the Lord. The, you know, our songs are full of scripture, right? They're, they're full of power, they're full of the words of the Lord. And so we're just like, let's just sing it over. Her. So she slept that first time she did that. She slept the entire time. And then um, it was time for us to go that day. It's three o'clock came time to clean up. Right. So one of the volunteers goes over to wake her up. And this was probably the hardest thing that I saw on this entire trip. Isabel woke up. You know, when you wake up, and you've been having a nightmare and it feels like you wake up and you're like, that was a relief, that was a nightmare, right? And you're now like, okay. Isabel, it was like she was at peace and she woke back up into the nightmare. 
and you could see it on her face. And I just literally turned my back to the wall and cried. I can't imagine what her life is like. This young, beautiful girl. But we got to pray, we got to sing, we got to worship over her. Right, so that day, it was three o'clock, it was time for her to go. She usually came in with no shoes on, you know, she just, you just see it in her body, the life that she's living. And so she had to leave. The next time she comes in, I notice she has shoes on. It was a small thing, but it was amazing, <laughs> right? She had shoes on. And so she comes in and she sits down by the worship right away. She doesn't, no wandering, no, you know, yelling, no anything, no looking at anything else. She comes in and she sits down close to where we were worshiping and she lays down and she falls asleep again. And so we got to sing over her again and worship with her, you know, over her again. And you guys, she got up and she left. The next time she came in, she had regular clothes on. Not street clothes. <laughs> she had shoes on. She didn't wander. She didn't do anything. You know, she went and she got something to eat because there was a kitchen and, you know, and, and we had a meal provi meals provided for them. And so she sat down and one of our other, um, one of the other ladies that was with our group got to sit down next to her and talk with her and have a conversation and found out some about her life and what she's been through and, you know, to remind her that God loves her and that there's help if she wants a way out. She's being trafficked. The people that she lives with sell her, is what she told them. But the ministry there has a way out. There's, there's help. She can, she can get away if she wants it. She can reach out for help. And so they had the conversation, and she comes and she sits, and she listens a little bit more, and then she, then she left again. And so that was one of the last times I was there, and I'm just praying and believing. Um, my friend Andrea, the other one who has the guitar, is going to go back. They're doing a three-month-long project. Um, kind of our, our month-long one was kind of like a... Uh, to see, like a test to see how it, how it can work. So they're going to do a longer one in the fall, and Andrea's going to go, and she's going to go back and worship. And Anat has, like, coordinated with her to, like, because Anat was like, I always wanted worship as part of this ministry, especially when we started to see the, the benefit, right, to see how amazing. So my point in all that, you guys, in sharing that story is, like, what happens? We have no idea when we just obey the word of the Lord, Right? He tells us to sing. He asks us to choose to worship him. There's more going on, not just in us, which is amazing, right? But we focus on him and we tune him. And then, Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done has whole new meaning. Right? Because through us, no matter where we are, we're worshiping at home, we're in our car, we're, you know, at work, whatever. We're transformed. We get to be transformed into the likeness of the creator, God, the most amazing, beautiful one in all of anything, <laughs> right? And it's a privilege, and he asks us this. What if he's asking us to sing, to worship, to give him our divine, to give him our praise in his language because he wants to come and do something on the earth? And we know that's the heart of our God, right? He wants to do it through us. He wants to partner with the creatures that he made in his image to be priests and kings. That's why he made us, right? So, I mean, I know that we can um, have other ways that we go and serve and do that. And we were encouraged by um, Samuel Whitefield to find more ways to, to serve and to everything that we did in Israel, we can do here, right? But even just if it's, if it's just worship on purpose in places, which is what we did, yeah, there's an effect. And just to encourage you guys today that there is an effect to what we do. There's so much more going on than we can see. And our God is awesome. He is an awesome, awesome God. Yeah, he's so good.